Hello, this is Dr. J, back with some more Let's Play StarCraft. We have completed the Zerg campaign. In all honesty, I'm glad it's behind us. The Zerg campaign, or playing as the Zerg at all, is a real assault on the senses with all the disgusting visuals and disgusting sound effects. And it's really hard for me to relate to playing as a swarm of ravenous, completely inhuman monsters. I mean, it's fun. I don't hate playing as the Zerg, but they're definitely my least favorite faction. So, onward to new and better things as we play next as the noble warrior race known as the Protoss. The Zerg Overmind has succeeded in invading the Protoss homeworld of Ire and has embedded itself into the crust of the planet. Now, as the agents of the Sinister Overmind spread chaos and destruction across the face of Ire, the stalwart Protoss defenders prepare themselves for the coming onslaught. First Strike, Citadel of the new Protoss Executor, two days after the Zerg invasion. was commanded to halt the Zerg progress in the Terran sector by burning the infested human worlds. Unfortunately, he disregarded his orders and attempted to destroy the Zerg while sparing the Terrans from the flame. Clearly, Tassadar has failed us. You must not. The Conclave has dictated that our first priority is to strengthen our defenses. You must reinforce our outpost in Antioch and make certain that the province does not fall to the Zerg. Your old comrade, Praetor Phoenix, will meet you there and assist you in this endeavor. All right, sounds good. Uh, our friend here has a pretty different portrait from in the original StarCraft. I don't know that I like this one compared to the original. But we will make do. Now that we're no longer playing as the Zerg, and so hopefully we won't have those ungodly loud mutalisks and other things that we have to deal with, I'm going to risk turning the game volume back up a little bit and hope that it doesn't completely overpower me. Uh, let's let's try this. Hopefully this won't be too loud. All right, so we have to meet up with Phoenix. Oh, that that is already telling me that's going to be kind of loud. All right, all right, all right. Down one notch. Let's try this. So, final campaign. We would expect this one to be the toughest. Though even for the final most difficult campaign, I would be surprised if the very first mission is especially difficult. More of that awesome looking water. Wow, I've missed that. It's also nice to be playing on a more or less Terran-like world, Earth-like world, rather than constantly, well, not constantly, but for the bulk of a campaign being on the volcanic hellscape world of Char. This is certainly more pleasant and easier on the eyes, has some natural beauty to it. So here we're introduced to the two most basic Protoss units, the Dragoons and the Zealots. The Zealots are very strong ground combatants, but they have no anti-air capability. The Dragoons are more versatile, being able to target both land and air. However, my experience is that Dragoons are real fragile and like to explode a lot. 
we'll probably be producing a lot of them anyway due to their versatility. Well, you have resources now. Okay, so we're back to a more familiar mode of production where instead of having to wait for larva and then spawn the larva into things, we just queue up production at specific structures. That was very sloppy of you, Phoenix, allowing... Allowing you to, uh, to run out of probes with no resources to replace them. Pretty sloppy. Alright, so we're getting tutorialized on how the Protoss work. We can only construct buildings within range of these pylons. But, the Protoss have in some ways the most efficient uh, building production because once a probe opens a rift to begin summoning a building, it can just go on its merry way and the building will continue summoning on its own. So it's better than Terrans, where the SCV becomes occupied while it's constructing a building, and way better than the Zerg, where you actually have to sacrifice a drone outright in order to create a building. Now, photon cannons, as we've seen... Also, the music is being a little overpowering. It's very nice music. It's very... Oh, the adjectives are escaping me. It's very sweeping and evocative. But it was a little loud there. Now, as we've seen from fighting against them, photon cannons are not amazing. They're kind of fragile and easily destroyed. I guess those mean the same thing. But uh, that doesn't mean they're useless. Build them in number, and they can be a fairly effective defense. So pylons serve a double purpose. We can only construct buildings or summon buildings within range of a pylon. How dare you send an overlord over my base? What are you thinking? Get wrecked. And they are also our source of supply, so they're equivalent to Terran supply depots and Zerg overlords. Guys, your pathing is an embarrassment. There, you guys can be anti-air defense up there. Now we'll be able to summon zealots. We need a cybernetics core for dragoons. I'm definitely going to need the reminders on all that stuff. Start getting some Vespine. The Protoss soundscape is definitely a lot more pleasing and easier on the ears than the, the Zerg soundscape is. The Protoss are a very mystical and advanced race, although, as we'll quickly learn, they are no more immune to all the sentient sins and foibles than our Terrans, like treachery and deceit. Unfortunately, we'll be seeing plenty of that, and hubris, lots and lots of hubris. I guess it's a little harsh to say we'll be seeing plenty of treachery and deceit. We won't be seeing that much of it, but... There is some, and like I said, tons of hubris. Protoss are pretty dang full of themselves. Alright, once we have the minerals, let's summon a cybernetics core. 
Still, it's probably fair to say they're more noble and honorable than Terrans on average. I think that's a reasonable statement. And they are certainly far closer to a human-like race than the monstrous Zerg, so it's quite a bit easier to empathize with them. Uh, it's nice being able to just have a single probe. You don't even need a probe dedicated to building construction duty. You just occasionally pull one away to summon a building you need. Ah, uh, it's nice. Alright, let's start building some zealots. Clearly, I am not the cerebrate in charge of these attacks. These are so feeble. This is not a gigantic swarm of ultralisks, hydralisks, and zerglings by any stretch of the imagination. Granted, it would be a little unfair to be subjected to that in the very first zealot mission when you're still learning the ropes. So we can all be thankful that we appear to be up against a pretty inept cerebrate. Or at least one that doesn't have access to a whole lot of resources, apparently. So zealots are twice as expensive as marines, and they take two supply instead of just one. But they are about twice as good as marines, so it evens out. In fact, on the ground, they're probably more than twice as good as marines, but they cannot target air, so they're not as versatile as marines are. Dragoons are interesting. They are zealots or other protoss who fell in battle and have been reincarnated as cyborg robot warriors. I'm pretty sure this is by choice. I don't think the protoss... Uh, force them into this fate involuntarily. Protoss are total fight otakus, so if they're given the chance to be reborn and continue fighting after they're killed, they are all over it. Singularity charge, increased dragoon attack range, that sounds worthwhile. And we've got the standard array of upgrades. Well, they're a little different. We upgrade weapons, armor, and shields. Shields are probably a higher priority because those recharge over time for free, just like Zerg regenerate for free. But Protoss cannot heal damage to their actual hit points. Again, I'm sure everybody watching this is probably more familiar with the game than me because I haven't played this game in years. I'm saying this partly to remind myself of all these facts. I don't think I need all four of these guys. I think three will be sufficient. All right, hold position. There we go. Oh, more pylons. Fair enough. I'll start learning the hotkeys. Probably P for pylon. Sure is. Soon enough, I think we'll be ready to go Zerg hunting. I'm not expecting heavy resistance on mission one. In fact, I'm so confident I'm even going to take Phoenix along, even though we lose the mission if he dies. Phoenix is a pretty cool dude. A stalwart warrior. Which isn't exactly rare for Protoss, but... Alright, let's get in there. Oh, there's a Zergling. There was a Zergling. Oh, another, uh... Another Dragoon has exploded. Uh, 
This is not going as smoothly as I thought. In fact, I think we're going to lose. Let's run. Okay, fair enough. Protoss Mission 1 should be the toughest of all the Mission 1s, so we're going to need a bigger force than that to take out the enemy. Understood. Fine. You know what? I'm going to stop just messing about then, and I'm going to go all out. Let's build another gateway so that we can begin summoning warriors in twice as fast. We'll see what you think of that, Zerg. And soon we shall be fully upgraded for Mission 1. And yeah, it looks like the enemy doesn't have much in the way of air, so I think we're going to want to go pretty heavy on the Zealots and pretty light on the Dragoons. Who, yeah, they're very explodey. Oh, that is... Okay, never mind about the no air units, then. That is cheeky. Clever. The AI is pretty good, as I said, at finding the holes in your defenses. Credit where it's due. That was pretty good. I may have underestimated this Cerebrate. Alright, Photon Cannon, if Pylon is P, Photon Cannon is C, C for Cannon. Reasonable. There. Hopefully this will prevent any more sneaky shenanigans. And then we can probably take these guys off the walls. Great, I used up all my minerals. You have not enough minerals. Maybe I... Oh, I lost some, didn't I? I think they killed some of my probes that are... Uh, on harvesting duty. Great, so I'm going to have to replace those two. Let's do three, I guess. Yeah, we're bringing in the minerals pretty slow. Well, like I said, credit where it's due. That was clever. So unlike the Zerg, where you'll, you typically attack with just massive, overwhelming numbers, but most of your individual units are weak, Protoss are going to be the opposite, where we attack with smaller groups, but the individual units are strong. Which, if anything, I expect that I should prefer that, because I find massive groups of guys kind of unwieldy. So theoretically, the Protoss ought to be easier to use. All right, we've got one and a half attack groups. Once we've got two full attack groups, let's see what we can get done. That'll basically be twice as strong as our previous attack. Ah, that mystical, sweeping, noble-sounding Protoss music. It's kind of inspiring, and yet almost relaxing at the same time. Makes me think of sweeping vistas and beautiful planets. Alright, 
We're coming back with a force twice as strong and more upgraded. Well, if you hunger for battle, don't you worry. We're going to be getting plenty of that. Oh, I guess I'm attacking a little prematurely. I have two more guys I'm warping in. Whatever. There'll be reinforcements. Alright, I don't want to lead with Phoenix. I'm feeling ballsy enough to include him in the attack, but I don't want him in the <laughs> front. There we go. Look at those Zerg fall before us. Okay, maybe it's not just the Mutalisks. There's a lot of battle sounds that are just really loud. The the Zealot side blade attacks are pretty damn loud too. We are tearing it up though, aren't we? Yeah, look at this destruction. We haven't lost a single guy. This is going way better than the first attack did. Well, I mean, it's more like they read the minds of some of our guys on Char and knew to teleport straight here. It's more like they just had really good or fortuitous in, in, intel rather than that they're worthy foes. But anyway, they're not going to take Ayer without a fight, that's for sure. Tiamat Brew, get wrecked. It's interesting how the names of the Zerg swarms are all very Norse-flavored. Uh, Jormen, Gonder, Garm, etc. Well, I guess they had to use some kind of inspiration for their names. I think we can probably fit the first two Protoss missions into one episode, just like we did with the other campaigns. So onward. Into the Flames. Citadel of the Executor the following night. Antaro Adun, Executor. Antaro Adun. The defense of Antioch has restored my faith in the Templar cast. I admit that Tassadar's desertion had shaken my faith. Indeed, Algaris. I would hope that the Judicator would put more faith in their Templar brethren. Tassadar, where have you Be been? Be silent, Judicator. There is no time to waste, but I have much to tell you. As you know, the Zerg vanished after the fall of the Terran world of Tarsonis. And though the Conclave bid me return home, I was compelled to remain. A powerful psionic call drew my attention to a remote barren world named Char. Apparently the call was answered by others as well. For upon Char, I encountered those who were once our brethren. The Dark Templar. Consorting with the Fallen Ones is heresy. Enough! Hear me, Executor. For I have learned much from the Dark Templar prelate, Zeratul. The Overmind controls its minions through agents called Cerebrates. Strike down the Cerebrates, and the swarms will surely fall. Executor, Tassadar may be right. If you can keep the Zerg occupied, my force may be able to penetrate their perimeter and slay the Abomination. I pray we can trust you, Tassadar. Already I can sense the taint of the Fallen One's influence on your mind. You must return to Ayer at once. My concern is for the safety of Ayer, not the judgments of the Conclave. I will return when the time is right. Eldaris is kind of a dick. <laughs> he embodies all the worst traits of the Protoss with his overweening pride and arrogance. Anyways... Our objectives are distract the Zerg while Phoenix gets into position, then kill the Zerg Cerebrate. Well, we don't have Dark Templar, which appear to be vital for pulling this off, so I don't think this operation is going to go very well. 
But we'll try. Would have thought Tassadar realized that. But apparently not. So is this basically survive for 15 minutes? Getting the economy up and running. Once this finishes warping in, we'll take three of our probes and devote them to Vespian duty. Oh man, it's so much easier setting up a Protoss base than a Zerg one. Very cool warp in effect. Alright, and we're gonna want. More probes collecting min- Whoa! Hey, Zerglings. Considering we're in the northwest, I wasn't really expecting to get attacked from the north, so well played. Okay, one, two, three, four, five... Six. That's not many. I feel like typically about ten seems to be a good number to have collecting minerals. That could be completely wrong. But it seems to have worked out well for me in the past missions, so we'll go with it here as well. We are almost at our limit. Let's warp in some pylons. Bah. Where's the... there he is. Looks like... is this a ramp? No, it's not a ramp. Well, if they came at us from the north, then presumably they might attack from that direction again, so I might want some photon cannons there. Okay, there's a ramp. And let's scout up to the north a bit. Ah, they came up this ramp then. Whoa! Run, little probe run! I think it's kind of cool how the Dragoon voice lines, like, uh, I am needed, make use of me, kind of drive home how they're, like, fallen warriors who just desperately want to still be useful. I don't know, I just think that's an interesting little touch, little interesting little bit of flavor. Okay, let's start warping in some vital structures. We'll need a gateway. And we can't make photon cannons without a forge. Oh, okay. Well, forge can be next. And... Oh, right, the shield battery. That can be useful because it can recharge your shields. You know, just like before, maybe I'll want two gateways. I'll warp in another one here. We've already used more than a third of our time, and all we've been doing is building our economy and our basic structures. Okay, now we can start making some defenses. couple of cannons here and yeah we can go ahead and make a single shield battery
And then a couple cannons down here, and I think we'll call the defenses squared away. Select a unit, right-click on the shield battery to recharge it, or use recharge shields and target an area to recharge all your units in that area. All right, good to know. Thanks for tutorializing. All right, maybe another pylon. And then we'll, once we have the resources, we're going to start warping in units. I just heard the sound of a... I knew it. Okay, you see how fragile the photon cannons are. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, you better run. Still, we'll replace it. It's kind of a case where the more photon cannons you have, the better they all become. Because with all of them zapping at once, they can really destroy stuff more effectively. We're going to need a cybernetics core for Dragoons, but let's actually start building some units. So before we summon a cybernetics core, we'll start training some zealots. And then we'll start doing some upgrading. Shields are by far the best upgrade, and therefore they're also by far the most expensive upgrade. Let's we'll start with weapons. Let's bring in a cybernetics core. Well, it costs 200, so not yet. Harvest for a little while longer, my little probe friend. But yeah, I definitely think that the original portrait of Aldaris was probably cooler looking. Let me real quick switch to the original graphics. I wish there was a hotkey for that. I don't know, maybe there is. But I haven't seen it. Yeah, look at that! That looks completely different. And in this case, I prefer his original look for sure. The other Protoss have looked fine. Tassadar looks fine. Phoenix looks fine. But, like, man, they, they changed him too much. It's just completely different feel. Mostly, the new portraits are fantastic, but they missed occasionally. Rainer's new portrait, just, uh, Aldaris is also not great. Rainer's is the real bummer, because Rainer is, like, arguably the hero of the game. And I really liked his original look. Okay, it looks like the shield battery can't recharge the shields of other buildings then. Just units. Life, 
Well, we're almost done with the time we had to distract the Zerg for. Alright, we've got one full group of guys. Well, let's venture out and be a little bit more of a distraction, huh? Rather than just sitting back in our base and being turtles. Whoa! Don't know how that Dragoon got separated like that. We found a force. Okay, this is a bit much. Let's pull back. I'd say that was distracting. Oh wow, that's a hell of a force, Phoenix. Including Reavers. We saw how ridiculously effective these things are when we had to fight against them as the Zerg. What would you ask of me? What I would ask of you is to help me kick Zerg ass. I'm pretty sure you'll be very on board with that. Alright, so I guess we're just launching a joint assault then. Okay. We will be back then, Zerg, very shortly, and this time it's going to be a pincer movement. Oh, right. That would be a problem. since uh, Phoenix's reinforcements are going to be taking up a bunch of... Uh... Oh, Phoenix is taking damage. Pull back, Phoenix. Okay, we're losing everything. That didn't go as well as I hoped. I have a feeling I should have been able to win that fight. And yeah, we are going to need more pylons too. Oh, good grief, we are almost out of minerals. I think I've played this mission very poorly. The Protoss may be a race where I really, really like playing as them. And in principle, they, s they seem like their style of play should be one that melds well with my play style and that I should be good at. 
one. But the, in practice, I'm not actually very good with the Protoss. I seem to remember that's basically how it goes. We'll see if we can carve a path to meet up with Phoenix and company. Oh man, how much would it suck if we needed to expand in mission two? Nagatsu. The Protoss have some pretty fun made up words and sayings. And Taro Adun. Okay, looks like that's just a dead end canyon. They have a lot of sunken colonies. Oof, only 94 mineral. I might not even have enough to summon another Nexus. Okay, there is an expansion point. But yeah, I don't think that I have enough for another Nexus. I think I was an idiot and didn't save up for it. Derp, 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 derp. Well, then, let's hope that this is a success. You know, the Meatalisks still seem really loud to me. Okay, this is going a little better. Okay, I think Phoenix and company can come down to reinforce us from the north now. This is rough for mission two. They've got so many sunken colonies. Oh my god, yet more? Okay, oh my god. Um, wow. If I can't finish it with this, I might have to excruciatingly, because a new Nexus costs 400, take the incredibly long time to get the minerals I need to build a new Nexus with the ridiculously long travel time from those resources to back to my home base. I did not think that through. <laughs> okay, let's hope that we can do it with this force, because otherwise, man, that's going to be painful. Oh, I've got a cat nose right up in my face. Hi, Jolene. Okay, there's the cerebrate. I think we did it. 
Now, one more sunken colony. Now, of course, we know this isn't going to work. I've got bad news on that front, Phoenix. Alright, that's the first two Protoss missions done. Next up is going to be Protoss Mission 3. Hopefully you'll join me for that, and I'll see you then.